We are in week number three of Just Add Water. Can we all give it up for my beautiful wife, Jackie, for bringing the heat last week? It's amazing. Kicked off this series. You can go back to our YouTube channel and actually check out all of our archived messages. This week, y'all, we had an incredible week this last week. We made history last night, but before we talk about that, Thursday night, we kicked off our city nights for our youth services. Come on, make some noise, HCY. It was incredible. And this is the thing, if you're a junior high or high school age student, or you're a parent of a junior high or high school age student, we are doing this every single week now. Come on, make some noise. It's going to be amazing. You can go to hopecity.com slash youth for location and times. Johnny and Sydney Lavender are leading so strong, and we're so excited for what God is doing in the next generation. Come on, make some noise for the next generation. It's going to be amazing. And then last night, y'all, we made history for the first time in Hope City history. We had our first Spanish night of worship. I mean, it was, it was incredible. And it is one of many to come because we love the community of a multicultural, multi-generational church. And we love our Spanish speaking community and our family that gathered last night. It was packed. It was electric. God showed up. People got set free, left better. Come on, make some noise one more time because it was incredible. <laughs> Love what God is doing at Hope City. Again, if this is your very first time, I'm a crowd participation preacher. I'm not just a speaker. That's what's hanging up here that you see. I'm a preacher, so you can say, that's good, white boy. You can yell that. You can say, is that a windbreaker? Do they make that in men's? It's okay. Like, you can just, just have some fun. We're going to have fun. We can have fun in church. Let me pray for you before we dive in today. So what God has for us. God, give us ears to hear you. We need it. More than ever, there's so much noise around us, so many things that are uncertain. But God, give us ears to hear you, a mind to understand, and most importantly, God, we position and posture our hearts in a position to receive all that you have for us today. Speak to us today through your word. Give us revelation and insight. God, we now lean in with expectation. If you believe us, say amen. Come on. I've said this before, but I'm going to continue to echo it. I want you to lean in throughout the rest of this series of Just Add Water with expectation. Don't just come as a spectator. Don't just check a box, I went to church, but really listen to what God is speaking through this series, because I believe he has something for us. There's a difference. I said it a moment ago, just kind of in passing. There's a difference between being a spectator, where you just have a what's in it for me sort of posture, or someone with expectation. I have a friend that says that the breeding ground of expectation, the breeding ground of expectation is miracles. So when we show up and we are expecting God to move and we gather in his name, I'm telling you, you'll walk out better than when you came in. How many of y'all believe that? So expectation, I was talking to a friend of mine whose wife just had a birthday and he said, man, she was really expecting me to roll out the red carpet for this birthday. And he said, I think I did I did pretty well. And he said, but the morning of her birthday, she wakes up and she was just really excited. And he's like, why are you so excited? She's like, it's my birthday. And he's like, I know. She's like, did you get me something? He said, absolutely. She goes, but did you give me something that you thought through? Like you thought, you thought about me. He said, absolutely. She said, you're confident. He said, pretty confident. You know what I mean? Like now that you're challenging it, yes. But she said, because I had a dream last night. How many of y'all have dreams? Like you have dreams, like you're like, ooh, there's a lot of dreamers in the room. I like it. Like, but you have vivid dreams. Like you're like, I don't know what happened. I was in a canoe made of chocolate. <laughs> and the oars were Twizzlers. And I don't even like Twizzlers. What was the Lord trying to say to me? Like, I don't know. Where's all the vivid dreamers? Like you have like real dreams. It's like, okay. So she had one of those. And she said to him, I had a really vivid dream. Like it was really real. And he said, well, tell me about it. She said, well, it was a gift that had diamonds. And he said, whoa. Well, what I got you, I think, is going to make a lot of sense. This is awesome. And she was like, oh, okay. So she went down, and he had made her breakfast, and then he brought her gift over, and she opened it up, and she looked at it, because it was a book, just a book. And she's like, this is it? And he goes, well, read the cover. And, the, and he said, I think it's going to help you with everything we've been talking about. The book was called How to Interpret Dreams. So, <laughs> I was pretty excited about it. A lot of expectation. Okay. It gets better, I promise. Okay, just add water. Week number three. Again, last week was incredible. Jackie talked about how in this series we're simplifying and answering the questions like, how do I grow in daily relationship with Jesus? How do I grow in faith? We talked about in Romans 12 where Paul talked about how we're all given the same measure of faith, but we can grow in our faith. 
There's not a lid to that unless we just choose to not grow. The only way to fail in prayer or not grow in the presence of God is to not show up. Because his presence is always present when we access it and we have access to it. And then what do we do now? The foundation verse of this series, when we kicked it off in week one, is found in Jeremiah 17, verse seven and eight. I love this. It says, blessed is the man. Now, this is talking about humanity, man and woman. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He's like a tree planted by water. Say water. That sends its roots out by the stream and does not fear when heat comes. I joked about this two weeks ago. This is a scripture for Houston. Amen. <laughs> for its leaves remain green, and it is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. This has become like a prophetic declaration for me personally, but also for our church, that our leaves will remain green. We're not anxious in the year of drought, because if you're listening, you hear all kinds of fear-induced, like inflation, and we know gas prices, and the concerns of recession, and baby formula shortages. There's all kinds of things happening right now, but when we lean into the presence of God, this is what I know, and this is what we've seen for seven consecutive years at Hope City, is we're a church that bears fruit. And the thing about Hope City, when I say Hope City, I don't mean the big organization of Hope City. No, no, the body of Christ is made up of y'all. Yeah. Look around the room. This is, what a be- this is what heaven looks like right here, multicultural, multigenerational. So the organization, Hope City, is big enough. Thousands of people gathering around our city every week. We're big enough to serve a city, but we're small enough to know each other. That's why we have connect groups. That's why we encourage you to go through growth track. That's why we say jump on the dream team, because what we believe is we're believing and we've decided to expect the unexpected. We've decided to live with greater faith and trust that even when everything around us seems to be uncertain, the thing that we can build our lives upon is Jesus, because he is the one thing that is Certain. I want to talk about bearing fruit for just a moment. This is where you can shout. Up until today, I believe we're going to break the record, but from January 1 till today, May 15th of 22, we've seen 1,936 people commit their lives to Jesus just this year. Just this year. That's, that's some fruit. And we believe we're going to pass 2,000 today. Come on, can you hook your faith up with that? And this is what we believe because we're bearing fruit. You might be watching from around the world. You might be watching somewhere in the nation. You may be sitting at Cinco or Woodlands or here at West Houston or Tanzania or one of our watch parties. We believe today, it's not by chance or accident, that you can walk out with your breakthrough, that you can walk out with your deliverance, that you can walk out encouraged. You can walk out because you know Jesus was in the room because God is building his church. We had a family reached out and planting a church and they started asking all these intricacies of how we do it, loading in and loading out. And they said, how do you get people to come? And I said, we're building a church where God wants to be. Because if God wants to be here, then people will want to be here. And that's the bearing fruit. God's presence is here. He's building his church. Hebrews chapter three, verse four says, for every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Since day one, seven years ago, the house was started by someone. The foster said yes, seven years ago, and now continuing to build in the trajectory of reaching more people, romancing more people to the heart of God, getting in the way of people's storms and seeing people set free, God is building his church. Look at the the person next to you and say, God is building his church. Come on, just say it out loud, the whole sentence, God is, that's good. So how many guys like you, you like, you, you kind of mess around a little bit with some construction stuff. Like, you know, you might, you might put a chair together, like, except Ikea. It takes months. <laughs> uh, so uh, in our family, uh, I, you know, I, I, I just don't have a lot of time. Like, my wife has the ability. She builds, you know, if something shows up. She's like, how long, how long, until, this, how long until this gets put together? And I'm like, you have a calendar handy? Like, what are we doing right now? We're going to put it on the calendar? She's like, I got it. I'm like, oh, okay, praise God. Um, <laughs> But we have a camper. When I say camper, like we don't camp, we glamp like it needs Wi-Fi and air conditioning. Amen. And so the other day I was running out to our camper uh, because we like to go out there with our kids. And my five-year-old, she was like, why are we going to the camp hole? And I said, because daddy needs to fix the, the bench. Like something happened. It's like broke. And she said, where's mommy? And I said, okay. <laughs> I said, I, I'm going to fix it. And she goes, 
you're not a construction walker. And I said, yes, I am. She said, where's your hat? I was like, I don't need a construction hat. She said, in your hammer. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, you're mocking me now. And I said, who, who in this house could fix this? And she said, call mom. I said, okay, that's enough. So in our house, Jackie's the builder of all things. Amen. I wear this, what would Jesus do bracelet, but it really means what would Jackie do. Okay. <laughs> that's what it really means. Let me give you some more fruit really quick. Here's our mission and outreach stats. Up until just two weeks ago, we partnered with Feed the Hunger, and over the past two weeks, we've packed 200,000 meals to be shipped out to Ukraine. Let's go. We put together hundreds of hygiene and cleanup kits to be prepared for the upcoming hurricane season with hundreds of volunteers, and we're gonna continue to do that with our partnership with Convoy of Hope. So many areas that you guys can serve and be a part you guys set the pace for what God is doing, not only through your giving, but through your serving. We also, this last two weeks, washed clothes and provided meals for hundreds of homeless people locally because, again, your generosity. Thank you for the way you give. Thank you for the way you serve. Thank you for the way you jump in. Let's go. Make some noise one more time for what God is doing at our incredible church. All right, so week number three of Just Add Water. If you're taking down notes, this week we're gonna talk about courageous faith. I love the word courageous because it means bold. It means brave. It means fearless, even audacious. We are called to be people of courageous faith. Joshua was leading the children of Israel throughout the wilderness. He had a promise from God to lead this massive group of people to the promised land. And it was taking a while, even after Moses and just the whole transition, but he was starting to feel overwhelmed by the weight of the task. How many of you guys have ever felt overwhelmed by the weight of a task? Maybe God has assigned something to you and you're like, God, why did you pick me? Like, why, why did you? <laughs> so I say, amen. Like, why did you pick me? But we can feel overwhelmed. That's called humanity. And God gave, God gave Joshua, he gave him an encouraging word. I believe that could help us this weekend as well. It's found in Joshua 1.9. Watch this. This is my command. This was a director from the Lord. He said, be strong and courageous. Say courageous. courageous. And I love the way this continues on. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Why? For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Come on, how many of y'all are grateful that we have a God that's with us wherever we go? In the valley moments, he's with you. In the mountaintop moments, he's with you. At that doctor appointment, he's with you. When everything around you feels chaotic, he's with you. So I love this verse. This is my command. This is God to us as his kids. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord, your God. You can make it personal. The Lord, my God, is with me wherever I go. In Matthew 17, week one, I talked about how Jesus talked about in a parable about if we could just have the faith of a mustard seed. In Romans chapter 12, I mentioned this earlier, but Paul talked about the measure of faith. And again, we all have the ability to grow in our faith, but there are some seasons we go through that are designed for us to grow through. There are some seasons we go through that I'm grateful that the waiting season didn't end up a wasted season because there's more courageous faith and things that God wants to unlock in us. One of the things that Jackie mentioned last week that I think is so foundational and essential She talked about guarding our hearts. The Bible says, Proverbs chapter four, verse 23, and this is essential to staying filled up to a place where you can unlock courageous faith in your life. It says, above all else, guard your heart. Why? For everything you do, it's loaded, flows from it. Everything you do flows from it. She talked about season one last week, talked about how we're a seed. She talked specifically how we're not buried but we're actually planted and covered and how we need a season. All of us need a season of being invested into. And to add to that, a few months ago, I talked specifically about having someone in your life that pours into you, someone that you're pouring into and people that are around you to keep you accountable. We all need seasons and I believe that we're all in seasons consistently where we're the seed and we need to be invested into. Season number two that Jackie talked about was checking the seed that we're planting. Are we planting the right seed? Are we planting the right seed for our future? Are you planting the right seed for your current season you're in? Are you checking for weeds in your life and looking around 
at situations, relationships, toxic thinking, things you're allowing in your life. Are you planting the right seed? Because season number three, she talked about how we're all called to be in this position where God waters it, then we weed, and then we wait. The waiting season's a frustrating season, though. How many of y'all deal with being patient? Like, I mean, it's like, you, it's like you don't know that Houston traffic exists every time. It's like the first time. Like, I can't believe this. What's happening? It's, it's Houston. This is where we're at. But she talked about how even a weed starts as a seed. Think about that. So are we allowing weeds to take root and smother out? Because a weed's job is one job, to strangle, to restrict, and to smother out the good fruit. And then season number four, this is the one that we want to live in all the time, is a season where we enjoy the harvest, where we're called to plant intentionally, we count on God to water, and he brings the harvest for Week number three, though, we're gonna talk about seasons where we are supposed to be growing in courageous faith. Because God, I want, I want everybody to hear this. God has never called us to do something that we are only capable of. Wow. We say this a lot, but God will never give us a life where he's not necessary. Right. He'll never open up a door or unlock purpose in our lives that we are only capable of fulfilling. He calls us to do something that requires his help. That's where courageous faith kicks in. And in order to fulfill the call that God has promised for you, more than ever, we need his presence to go before us. We need his presence to be next to us. We need his presence to be with us. Moses understood this in Exodus chapter 33, verse 15. And Moses said to him, if your presence, I love this. I love that he has this type of relationship with God. If your presence does not go with me, do not lead us up from here. I don't know about you, but I pray every day, God, let nothing in my life be outside of the assignment that you called me to. I don't want to say it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to dream it. I don't want to be a part of it if it's not connected to the assignment and the call that's on this church and on our lives. Because if your presence doesn't go with me, then don't lead us from here. I think so many times in our humanity, we rush it. I've said this before, if you rush it, you'll ruin it. That's why it's so important to pause, pray, and be patient. Because God, if your presence, say it out loud, say, God, I need your presence. Because if his presence is not leading you, then don't move until you know that he is directing you. Moses understood the assignment. He understood, I don't want to do this in my own strength. If you're not leading me, I refuse to go. The devil does not want you to become who God has purposed you to become, and the enemy wants to try to keep us bound, full of fear, full of anxiety, so that we never grow or operate in the courageous faith that God has called us to walk in, because fear is the enemy of our faith. I've said this before, but fear tolerated is faith contaminated. It muddies the waters of your ability to believe. Fear is the enemy of our faith. So this weekend, I want to speak to someone's purpose and even their possibility because you're chosen. You're called by God. He's equipped you with a measure of faith that he wants to add water to so that you can grow into who God has called you to ask, to unlock. God, ask. I'm asking you with audacious faith to unlock this in my life. But when you lean into his presence and recognize who you are and whose you are, chosen, called, equipped. Come on, say I'm chosen. Say I'm called and I'm equipped. Some of you need to just prophesy I'm chosen, I'm called, and I'm equipped. And God did not just, he didn't just design you to just survive life. There's so many people that are just surviving life. Like, what day is it? They're always out of breath. <laughs> what day is it? It's Wednesday. Okay, okay. It's Wednesday. Like, we're not called to just cruise control Christianity. We're not called to just survive life. We're called to thrive in life, and he's anointed you to finish strong. Come on, somebody. Courageous faith is the key to unlock doors in your path. And I love this. I was writing this down last night, and I just feel like this might be an opportunity for somebody to shout, because for some of you, maybe the enemy has lied to you and told you that the situation you're in is the end. God has the incredible ability to say to be continued. 
Because the Bible says in Philippians chapter one, verse six, and I am certain, I love that opening line, I am certain, I am confident that God who began the good work within you will continue, say to be continued, come on. His work until it is finished on the day when Christ returns. Throughout this series, and if you stick around and you're a part of what Hope City's doing, you're gonna hear me and other guest ministers and Jackie say this a lot, we talk a lot about the first 15 challenge. How many guys do it every day, the first 15 challenge? That's a little bit better. Two weeks ago, I asked and nine people. They're like, and they're just kind of like, yeah, sure. No, the first 15 challenges every day, you wake up and you're intentional about your spiritual disciplines. Every day you read the Bible five minutes, just five minutes. Just unlock, unlock some faith. You read the Bible for five minutes, then you worship for five minutes, then you pray for five minutes, and then you simply Remember, you sit and just remember all that God has done for five minutes, just 15 to 20 minutes. I added the last one. We just called the first 15, and then we added the fourth one, so it actually makes it 20. But the truth is, the, <laughs> it's the first 20 challenge, amen. Uh, but the hungrier you get in the presence of God, 15 minutes isn't long enough. 20 minutes isn't long enough. Man, I get in there and look and say, it's been 45 minutes, I gotta go to this meeting, but this isn't long enough. We talk about this a lot at Hope City, that there's a reason why your windshield is bigger than your rearview mirror. God is far more interested in your future than your past. And a lot of times when we just simply remember all that God does, it activates faith for the now and builds our faith for the future. When you just take a moment to look back, the truth is, I'm not sure it's a faith problem sometimes that we have. I wonder if it's a simply remembering problem. That we don't just stop. Because the enemy's really good about just putting a fog around you that says you're not gonna get through this. This distraction, this is the one. This situation is what's gonna keep you from your assignment. This is the one that's gonna destroy you financially. This is the sickness that's gonna take you out. Just pause and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. But God showed up for me here. And he delivered me over here. And he fought for me right here. And I say this a lot because I need you to grab it. When we simply remember, it's easy to push out and evict the things that are consuming you and distracting you. And I believe it's an incredible opportunity as our church, our church family to grow in our faith because with everything around us, it's uncertain. Again, I said it earlier, between inflation and gas prices and the threat of recession and all that's happening around. How many of y'all are carpooling? You're like, I'm riding with you. No matter what, I'm riding with you. I'll just... <laughs> No, no, we're all going through it. But this is a great opportunity for us to redirect that thinking. I grew up in like churchy church where the pastor would get up and say, some of y'all just need to rearrange your stinking thinking. Yep. It's catchy, I didn't forget it, amen. <laughs> but the tr it's the truth. We have to redirect our thoughts towards the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse five says that we are to take captive every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into obedience to Christ. So as we talk about courageous faith, I believe there's some things that we've been allowing in our lives that's consuming us. Uh, just by a show of hands, there's some things that have been just consuming your thinking. Like, you just can't shake it. Come on. Yeah, Wes, come on. It's okay to be vulnerable. We're transparent. Today's a day that we're going to evict some things. We're going to kick out some unwanted guests. And we're going to let go. I believe it's time to let go of those toxic moments, those situations that feel overwhelming I love this saying, change the way you think, change the way you speak, it'll change your life. I love this book by Joyce Meyer called Battlefield of the Mind. Yeah. We don't get any kickbacks from this. You can go on Amazon and find it. It's a great book. I've read it cover to cover multiple times. The Battlefield of the Mind, because a lot of times the battlefield of the mind keeps you so bound that you can't simply remember all that God has brought you through and all that he has promised to bring you through. So again, I believe this weekend, we're going to get rid of some things that have been taking occupancy and taking up space in our life. About a little over a year ago, we had some unwanted guests come and stay at our house. Some of you are all like, you can't talk about Jackie's mom like that. Uh, <laughs> she's precious, but she's okay. She's a good lady. Uh, no, so we had professionals come out because we had, we had a, an issue uh, at our house. And uh, this guy told us, he said, listen, uh, uh, how do you order uh, Amazon packages a lot? And, and I was like, me? And he was like, well, I'm not making eye contact with her. And, and she was like, I do sometimes. I'm like, that's an understatement. Let's be honest. How many of you guys like uh, to order a lot of Amazon stuff? Like, it's just constant. 
Sometimes I think they've made a mistake. I'm like, again, twice a day? That's incredible. I could just show up here all the time. It's on demand. And so anyways, he said, uh, you, you have allowed some unwanted guests to come in because sometimes you get a hitchhiker on a package. And so, I mean, it got crazy, y'all. I mean, we're in our, we're in our room and I heard, <laughs> flipped on the kitchen light and all these roaches. <laughs> I turned the lot up. <laughs> they went back. <laughs> y'all, they, were, they weren't paying rent. They were setting up. They were everywhere. We were, it was a full-on infestation. And the, the, the professional, that's what I like to call him, the professional exterminator, he said, listen, I want you guys to both know you're not unclean people. I'm like, thank you. Thanks for clearing that up because I was... And he said, no, no, no. They ride in on Amazon boxes and then they just, they just take over. And they did. And it took months, months to evict these un." wanted guests. And I can say today on May 15th, 2022, we have no more roaches. <laughs> Amen. He actually said, the exterminator said that either it came in on an Amazon package or maybe it crawled out of somebody's purse at church. It's y'all. This is me. I'm blame some of you. <laughs> blame some of you. <laughs> but today we're going to evict some unwanted thinking and some things that have been trying to hold us captive some stuff that has been maybe robbing us of our joy. And I believe that God wants to pull us up out of some low places. I believe throughout this series, we're going to continue to see faith rise. Look at the person next to you and say, God's already working. Come on, we're talking about courageous faith. God is already working. He's fighting for you in battles that you don't even know about. Hebrews 11, 1 says, now faith, I love this, is the confidence of what we hope for and the assurance of what we do not See, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Living our lives in a manner consistent, I love this line, consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. Courageous faith and confident belief in God's promises will get you through every season. We're gonna unpack some more seasons. Last week, Jackie did it so eloquently, but some seasons we walk through, God will give us direction without the details. Where's all, how many of y'all have experienced that before? You're like, okay, God, I'm ready. And then it's like, you don't hear anything else. You're like, okay, like, did I do something wrong? Like, Genesis 12 almost feels like God will be silent in a season to unlock courageous faith in our lives. In Genesis 12, God revealed to Abraham and Sarah, he said, hey, you're gonna have a baby, you're gonna have a son. He tells Abraham, you're gonna be the father of many nations. And Abraham's like, Sarah's super, super old. That's the message translation. He said super twice. <laughs> like, how are you going to make this all work out? It took over 25 years to get from the promise to provision. The waiting season of you're going to have a son and be the father of many nations. I'm sure multiple times Abraham and Sarah wanted to give up. That's why I said a moment ago to not allow the waiting season to be a wasted season. What is God trying to teach you now? What is he trying to direct you in now? What is he trying to grow you up in faith now for future seasons? That's for somebody. God is trying to equip you with arsenal and weaponry and tools that you need now that he's building in you now to be able to take on what he's entrusting you with later. In, uh, I love that Sarah in... Abraham, as they trusted and believed what God would say, it ultimately came to pass. Everything that God had promised them was truly on the other side of their waiting. In Genesis 6, God instructed Noah, we love this story, build this huge ark. He was ridiculed and mocked for over 120 years in the waiting season. He was talking about water falling from the sky that we call rain, but in those days, they had never seen rain before. The earth was water from the ground and the soil up. So he was mocked and ridiculed in between the promise and the provision. He waited on the Lord. He held on to the initial word from the Lord. He just kept going back. This is for somebody. He just kept going back to what the father told him last. Some of you have heard this story before, but last summer I was teaching our Daphne uh, to, to swim. And uh, I'm, t I'm teaching Fox now. It's not going as well, I'll be honest. He thought I was trying to waterboarding the other night. He was pretty upset at me. 
Um, but, but Daphne I was trying to teach her and she had her little floaties on and I said, okay, baby, listen, you're going to have the floaties on. And so when you're in the water, you got a, you got a, uh, you got a puppy dog paddle. And she said, um, okay, puppy dog paddle. I said, yeah, go dog paddle. She said, puppy dog paddle. I said, puppy dog paddle. That's fine. And so she, and I said, then you kick your feet. So she was kicking her feet. I said, but listen, and then you hold your breath. You hold your breath. And so she was doing that. And I was walking through it. Jackie's looking out the window like, nice, such a good dad. I think, at least that's what I envisioned. That's what I thought she was saying. She was like, dinner's ready. Uh, but she was looking at me. She's like, and so I'm watching. And I said, babe, this is important. If you never have your little floaties on and you fall in the water, what are you going to do? She said, puppy paddle. I said, puppy paddle. What are you going to do? She said, kick my feet. I said, kick your feet. And what are you going to do? She said, hold my breath. I said, hold your breath. Good job. You got it. You got it. Well, I got distracted somehow with Brecken. I was over talking to him. And uh, we were distracted. And she had taken her floaty off, or her older sister Finley took her floaty off. And we were all going in the house, and Jackie said, where's Daphne? She had fallen in the deep end of the pool, and I didn't know it. There was so much other things happening. She fell in. I saw her floaties, and, and you know, for, for an hour and a half, I had been teaching her to puppy paddle and to kick, right, and, and to hold her breath, and she's now in the deep end of the pool, and I run over. I can't find She's in the bottom of the pool, y'all. Sit at the bottom of the pool. And I could have said, you're doing it. Good job. You've learned. No, y'all, I jumped in and I pulled her out really quickly and I held her and she was panicking and we went in the house and I was a wreck. I mean, I was an absolute mess. And Jackie said, hey, look at me, look at me. She said, you did good. She said she did what her daddy told her last. She held her breath and she paddled and she knew that she would come and rescue her. For some of you in the waiting season, that courageous faith is to just simply go back to what the Father told you last. In Genesis 37, God gave Joseph a dream. Joseph waited 13 years for the fulfillment, for the fulfillment of that God-given dream. In 1 Samuel 16, David was anointed. What an amazing moment. But it took over 10 years from the day he was anointed to be crowned king. So if God is making you wait, I just want somebody to hear this. If God is making you wait, then you're in good company. You're in really good company right now. <laughs> Write this down if you're taking down notes. Courageous faith still trusts him even when you can't track him. Courageous faith still trusts. I trust you, God, even when I can't track you. Because even in seasons where it's really hard to grasp the details, God is still working it for your good. I remember we were, uh, when we were traveling before we became the lead pastors here, we were traveling quite a bit, helping churches. I have a heart for evangelism. We've seen hundreds of thousands of people saved and, and uh, we got two booking requests and people were sending in like, hey, we want Daniel to come and preach. And, and so we got two booking requests. Some of you maybe have heard this before, uh, but the same weekend, we got a booking request to go to Miami, okay, <laughs> and Memphis. Nobody wants to go there. Nobody wants to. No offense. We're watching Memphis. We love Elvis. Hey, Amen. It's just stomping grounds. Uh, but but I, I, I saw the invitations and I said, Jackie, I said, hey, guess what? We're going to, meet, we're going to Miami. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Surf and turf. We're going to have like lobster and filet and blue water. It's a little different than Galveston, just a little bit. And so we're going to go to Miami and she's like, okay, cool, cool. Hey, did you see the other booking requests? I said, what? what? And she said, to Memphis. I said, mm-mm. <laughs> oh, we can go another time. She said, I really think you should read it. It's pretty heart touching. I think, I think you should read it. And I was like, that's fine, but let's book the tickets <laughs> to Miami. And so uh, the booking request, the first one, Miami, was like, it's a conference. You know, this is an influencing moment. It's a big stage with thousands of people and nice hotel and all inclusive. I'm like, yes, Lord, even if it's not you. Yes, Lord. <laughs> I'll ask for forgiveness later, God. If I miss you, at least I'm going to miss you with scallops, <laughs> bacon-wrapped items. <laughs> and then the Memphis one said, we prayed and prayed, and we've been trying to raise money to have you in, and what we offer is probably not even enough. We're a hungry church that's believing for revival, and we want to see miracles. And I said, God, send someone to Memphis. Amen. <laughs> Lord, let me... <laughs> Lord, I have so many other friends. I can just send Brandon Lake, God. Send somebody. Send somebody. 
So my wife said, what are we doing? I said, buy the tickets to Miami. So she, she bought the tickets to Memphis. And so we, we ended up in Memphis and we show up at this little church. And I'm telling you, the countdown's on. There's nine people in the room. They all act like they were forced to be there, including this one girl and her mom. And the room ended up filling in, but it was a small little church. And this girl acted like she did not want to be there. She had an attitude. She was frustrated. And her mom was like, this is my daughter. And I said, you don't act like you want to be here. She said, I don't want to be here. And I said, why are you here? She said, because she drugged me. She literally made me get in the car and made me come. I said, we have a lot in common. She made me come. She bought the tickets. I'm here because of her. I was supposed to be in Miami right now. So then we got through all of that. Y'all, God showed up. I'm telling you, courageous faith to begin to rise and supernatural audacious faith like that is only crazy until it happens and I'm telling you God showed up miracles begin to break out God healed that little girl she had been cutting she had cuts and scars all over her arms I saw him before the service God transformed whatever was broken inside and God healed her in the external everybody saw it because they knew her scars and cuts disappeared it was like overseas tent revival Smith Wigglesworth you read about it type of story God showed up and I couldn't track what God was doing. He gave us direction, but I didn't have the details. The truth is, in those moments, all he's asking for is obedience. He's just asking for you to say yes. What has God been asking of you that is keeping you from growing in courageous faith because there's a lid on your life? That measure of faith, is it growing in your life? I'm telling you, it will grow if you'll say yes, if you'll lean in. We also learned Courageous faith in God during that season increases our inward capacity that our faith in God becomes bigger than our challenges. There's a stretching that happens. You know, a rubber band is only valuable when it's stretched. But sometimes in that stretching, you think it's designed to break you. But the truth is that stretching is actually designed to add more to your life. I feel like somebody should say amen right there. You'll have a boldness that says, I'm going to stop talking about how big my giant is, and I'm going to start talking about how big my God is that can defeat every Goliath in my life. Instead of talking about all my problems, when you have courageous faith, you'll start being thankful for all his promises. I was so thankful today. I drove over here today and just kept saying over and over again, I'm thankful for this. I may not have it all figured out, but I'm thankful for this. I may not have exactly what I have prayed for in this, but I'm thankful that you've showed up here. And there's just this gratitude. And I'm telling you, when you have a, and this is going to sound cheesy, but it, you'll remember because it rhymes. When you have an attitude of gratitude, I'm telling you, it removes the lid in your life. But humanity and our human mindedness is real. And a lot of times we can get caught up in expectations that were unmet. I met a guy last week who was struggling with some frustrations towards God. He said, I, I know I'm called to this. I know I was supposed to do this. And then the more we unpacked it, the more we realized it wasn't a God issue. It was actually he had expectations and limitations in his humanity that he put on God. It just wasn't God's timing. And I said, you know, sometimes in that direction or that lack of detail, sometimes it's for your protection. Maybe God is trying to align some things for you now. And we begin to talk about courageous faith and begin to encourage him like God's not done with you yet. You've survived 100% of your worst days. Get back up again. Stand up again. Allow faith to grow in you again. And I gave him three verses. I said, I want to give you three verses to encourage you. And I think they'll encourage us this weekend as well. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one. I said, watch this. You had expectations and maybe the timing wasn't right. For everything, there is a season. And time for every matter under heaven. Psalms 27, 14, one of my favorite verses. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Come on, say courageous. courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. We deal with patience. I asked earlier, and a bunch of you were like, you were in patience. You were like, I don't even, I don't even. <laughs> we deal with this at a young age. I remember as a kid, Things are so much different now. When I was 11 to 13, like my oldest two, my mom would say, hey, I'm gonna go run errands. I'll be back for you. I, didn't have, I couldn't call her. We didn't have pagers. I just waited. I had to wait. Sometimes an hour and a half, she'd pull up. Like, where have you been? She's like, get in. Let's go. So our kids now, I'm like, I'll be there at 7.30. It's 7.32. I get three texts and two calls. Where are you at? <laughs> Come on, where's all the parents at? <laughs> but patience and waiting is... 
something that we have to continue to grow in. Galatians 6, 9 says, and let us not grow weary of doing good though, for in due season you'll reap if you do not give up. I had an opportunity to pray for this guy. He's gonna check out one of our other locations and I talked to him about the gifting and the call of God on his life. So my question for all of us this weekend, if God seems quiet, can you get through that season of silence and waiting? Because courageous faith grows in the middle of the waiting and quiet season. You can write that down. Courageous faith grows in the middle of the waiting and quiet season. I remember my mom, watching my mom. I'm living proof of a God-fearing woman who embraced the season of silence and trusted God in the waiting season when she was believing that my alcoholic and drug addict dad would come to know the Lord, she was patient in the waiting season. I know it's not easy, and when we're on the other side of it, she can shout from the rooftops, but for the years of turmoil and the frustration, I'm grateful for a God-fearing woman that says, I still will choose to trust God in the middle of it. Come on, somebody, if you're choosing to trust God in the middle of it, I'm telling you, his promises don't have expiration dates on them. Another thought around seasons we walk through really quickly, sometimes when we pray, because the Bible says in 1 John 5, 14, it says when we have courage in God's presence because we are sure, we have this courage in God's presence. Why? Because we're sure that he hears us when we ask him for anything according to his will. I think every time we ask him with confidence and boldness according to his will, we have to check ourselves. Are we praying prayers with selfish motives? Are we praying prayers with selfish ambition? Because sometimes when we ask God for something, the answer is yes. Come on, that's where, that's where we want to land. Sometimes it's not yet. Oh, we don't like that one. Sometimes it's no. Like, God, I pray that you would derail Sheila. God, that she won't follow through on the TPS reports, and you'll demote her, and they'll promote me so I can get the much-needed apartment and the car that I deserve. And that's not necessarily according to God's Will, God, I pray that my spouse will have chronic hiccups until he listens to me. That's not according to his will. <laughs> I had hiccups for four straight days last week. I wondered, I was like, Jackie, what have you been praying? <laughs> While we're on this, a little side note. We're a church and we want to be a people that spends more time praying for people than talking badly about them. Yeah. And I feel like for some, we need to, we need to check ourselves because we just talk. And the Holy Spirit has never inspired anyone to plot the downfall of someone else. So if you're doing it in the name of the Lord, God's like, hey, 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 that's not me. <laughs> we have to start praying more. We have to start spending time in God's presence more. And I think this question, this checking our motives, because in seasons that we're currently in of not yet or even no to those prayers, my question for us, all of us, is will we choose to still praise and worship him? Because courageous faith will choose to praise and worship in every season. Courageous faith will choose to praise and worship and spend time with the presence of God in every season. If it's yes, I'll praise you. If it's not yet, I'll choose to praise you. If it's no, then I know that you know what's best for me. I'll still choose to pursue and praise you. We oftentimes ride this emotional roller coaster of what we think faith is. It's really a shaking, fleeting, unsettled idea of what faith is. And I believe that this weekend, God is equipping us so much more. He wants to equip us with that courageous faith. I'm going to give you three, and then we're going to bring it in for landing. Some of y'all are looking at your watches. I promise you, you'll beat the Methodist to Golden Corral. We've, I've got you. I've got you. Three characteristics of growing in courageous faith. Number one, courageous faith equips us with boldness. It equips you with boldness. And I love that courageous, the word bold, brave, fearless. Proverbs 28, one says, the ungodly man flees when no one pursues, but the righteous is confident as a lion. Fear will cause you to run and hide, but courageous faith in God will give you boldness to face any situation. I remember when we were walking through a health scare a couple different times with my wife, and they were talking about tumors and cancer and all this stuff. I remember a fearlessness, a boldness that came over her that said, God protected me when I was little. He showed up for me all the way through elementary, junior high, high school, and college. If he showed up before, I'm bold enough to believe he'll show up again. I'm telling you, courageous faith equips you with a boldness that doesn't make sense. Number two, courageous faith equips you with perseverance. 
Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering, since he who promised is faithful. The walk of faith is a walk of perseverance. When the answer does not come when we want it to, that's when courageous faith does not quit. And number three, courageous faith equips us with stability. I love that. We get our footing. Psalms 40 verse two says, he lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a solid ground and he steadied me as I walked along. I love that line. He steadied me. Come on, where's all my, I never should have made it at? Come on, you know you never should have made it. How many of y'all know that he has steadied your feet all along your journey? Some of you, you know you shouldn't be here. Some of you are watching online and you know you should have never made it. But when I read these verses, you allow God to rearrange things in your life and bring stability. He'll steady you as you walk along. Courageous faith, again, trusts him when you can't track him. Courageous faith grows in the middle of the waiting in the quiet season. Courageous faith will choose to praise and worship and be in relationship relationship with him in every season. With every eye closed just for a moment, maybe you're here today and you say, Daniel, here's the truth. I don't have courageous faith because I haven't had access to it. Here at Hope City, we don't pray prayers for symbolic reasons. We truly believe that when you confess with your mouth, and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. Courageous faith, everything we've been talking about, boldness and bravery and fearlessness in the waiting season is all found in his presence. The sinner's prayer, these symbolic moments. It's not why we do this. We do this because when you position and posture your heart in a position of surrender, I'm telling you, he'll rewrite your story. He did for my dad, who was broken and messed up and messy. But here's the truth. And I love this statement at Hope City. You can belong before you believe. I sometimes believe Christianity is a little bit of a marathon. I believe that we can speak into you weekly and then God, when you allow him access, will begin to unlock hope in your life. If you're here today, I'm gonna give you an opportunity and count to three. I won't embarrass you. I promise you that's not what we do, but I'm gonna count to three. And if you're the first invitation, you say, Daniel, I want access to this type of courageous faith, but I don't know Jesus. And for the first time today, I wanna surrender my life to him. This costs you no money. The only thing this takes is surrender. Maybe the second invitation, you say, Daniel, here's the truth. I used to walk with God, but I fell away and I need to rededicate my life today. I've been living messy. I've been living pretty reckless and today's the day. I just need to make things right with Jesus. And I count to three. If you're either one of those invitations, one, I want to give my life to Jesus. Two, I want to surrender my life again and rededicate my life. When I hit three, I want you to lift up your hand across all of our locations. Three, if that's you, lift up your hand. I see you, 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 I see you. Here at West Houston, hands are going up everywhere. I see all of you back here, my friends. I see you, my friend. I see you right here, incredible. Online, just type yes to Jesus. Our team will help you. Come on, one more time, give it up for every person that just said, you're talking to me. You're talking to me today. I want everybody to pray this prayer, including people watching online. Say this out loud across all of our locations. Jesus, today is my day, my day of surrender. I've been living for me and it's not working. From today on, I choose to live for you. I repent for all my issues, all my struggles, all my poor choices. I let go of it now and I ask for your forgiveness. From today on, I'm going to live for you. You are my Father, you're my Savior, and you're my Lord. Thank you for your grace, for every goof up. Thank you for your mercy, for every mistake, and unlocking courageous faith in my life today. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody make some noise. Give God praise. Let's go.